besides education, goes to health care. So we have done very little to help um, the next generation prepare. As a matter of fact, um, primary education has been left in the hands of local government. And local government doesn't have what it takes in terms of funding capacity or the wherewithal to be able to put the right kind of teachers in the classroom or to pick the responsibilities that come with early childhood education. And as a matter of fact, I think that we are sending our worst hands to build our foundation, which well, doesn't even make sense. I mean, if you're putting up a building, you want to send your best professionals to, the, to you know, help you set the foundation. You understand? But right now, we are doing it in reverse with education. And we do not think that young Nigerians are getting the right kind of tools that can empower them to even remotely compete with their counterparts in other parts of the world in another 10 years. And it is very sad and it's a shame. I think that we are not doing enough. And I think that's, that's very lenient. We're not doing nothing to change that. And it's unfair to your children in this country. I think the big problem that we have is that we do not have an economic vision for this country. Because your educational policy is supposed to fit into an economic aspiration. We don't have that. So everybody just uh, educate in silos. So you just get what you think you need and we'll move on. Even as a country, we have an educational policy that is underpinned by our national vision of what we want to be in 50 years. That is going to inform, for instance, the caliber of or the quality of manpower you will need in the various sector. And that, again, will now inform the quality of curriculum that will be used to raise that quality of manpower to be able to help you drive your economic aspiration. That is how normal countries behave. We don't have that. So we discovered that everybody's just running with a private agenda. Everybody's doing what they want. Ask a typical politician, where do you want this country to be in 50 years? No idea. People don't know. It's the reason you keep recycling, um, you know, people from the older generation who are not 21st century compliant, who have no idea what the future is going to look like. They're not even going to be there, the people of the future. So the young people who are supposed to, you know, be the focal point of our educational policy are completely ignored, neglected. You understand? And that's how ma mess up things are. So I think that as a nation, we should sit down and ask ourselves the hard questions. Where do we want to be? What quality of people do we need to get there? How do we reposition our education to help us raise that quality? You know, a few years ago, um, uh, McKinsey Global Consulting wrote out this global immigration report that states that 120 million people migrate from rural to urban areas every week. And that's going to create a new middle class of over 3 billion people. 3 billion people middle class. That's a new wealth zone that's going to be created of nearly $50 trillion. Now, these 3 billion people are going to wear clothes, they're going to use phones, they're going to use gadget technology, they're going to eat food. Smart nations are looking at how they can equip their next generation to produce all of the t things that these 3 billion people are going to require. That's how you plan. Or I wouldn't do the kind of research that should underpin our policies, but at least somebody else has done it. You can take that data and then underpin your own education policy around those. But we're not doing that. I'm really worried uh, what kind of country we are hoping to get in another 20 years. It's all like, let's hope things get better. Hope is not a strategy. You have to sit down and fix this. I think government should just hands up school all together and then provide funding all right, for both students and private operators who wants to go to, you know, if you give some kind of tax breaks to some of these schools, they can run better schools. Or hand them over to missionaries to do a better job. Government never run anything right. I mean, if you look at most of the institutions run by government, they all in the end, nose dive. That tells you that government is not in the business of running an economy or running schools and stuff. They can provide legislation, they can provide an enabling environment, a favorable policy regime that allows these things to thrive. All right, there's nothing wrong if education is paid for. For instance, all you have to do is ensure you have a robust student loan program that students can actually apply and then pay over 20, 30, 40 years. Allow people to actually get a quality education that they want and put a demand on the system. When you give free education and you're not gonna fund it, in the end, everybody loses. All right, so government has quite a lot to do in terms of you know, bridging the gaps between the haves and haves not. You understand rural education and urban education. Those who have the funding go to the Ibrox schools. Those who don't are stuck with you know the quality that we offer them at the grassroots level, which is no quality at all. Sadly, the people that we're not educating rightly are those who are going to be our leaders. 
Because those kids from the rural areas are the ones who run for councilor. The ones who run for House of Assembly and run for, <laughs> run for chairmanship of the local government. They will make the policies of the future and they are the ones not getting any education. Until we hit 26%, we should not be impressed. Because you see, as a matter of fact, if you look at it, you just talked about budget. Uh, so it's, it's something is a chicken egg problem. Nearly over half of the entire budget bill is outsourced. All right, your capital budget is outsourced. All of the people who are coming to fix our roads, build our bridges, and all of that companies from abroad, all right, and all their profits expatriated. All right, if you look at your budget, um, even something as hard as your international passport is printed abroad, your Naira notes is minted abroad, and all of the, the uniform of your law enforcement are printed abroad, down to the cutlery in state houses. It tells you that we, don't, we have not built capacity locally to be able to replace all of this, and so our monies keep going abroad. So when you now spend only a small fraction of that budget to raise the capacity, it means you have no plan to stop outsourcing our wealth. This capital will continue to fly out because there is no plan to keep it in. All right? If you ask government people, why don't you source for these things locally? They say, ah, people here, they don't have the quality or the capacity to produce a quantity. They will want, how would they scale up if there is no patronage? If the big ticket, you know, contracts go outside the shores of this country. So we need a government with a human face that understands what we need as a people. So if you are hoping that maybe some 2027, all our budget expenses will be done in-house, then you will invest heavily in education to make sure that we are providing the needed capacity to make sure that happens. You see, we have to make sure that the education sector attracts the brightest and best. And the only way to do that, to make people want to go to uh, college of education or universities of education for the purpose of teaching is to make it attractive. No matter how much passion you have, you know, to teach, you know, to be in the classroom, your passion can pay the bills, can put food on the table. You need government to be able to raise the salary scale of teachers, for instance, make it one of the highest paying professions in the land. And then you see the people who care about us, they're really showing up. Then you can raise the standards. When they're the, you know, um, uh, lowest paid profession in the land, they say, when you pay bananas, you employ monkey. And, and that's the way it is. So one way to fix that is to ensure remuneration is looked at so that we can increase the st entry standard, all right, uh, the colleges of education. Otherwise, the colleges of education will continue to attract the worst set of students and then we're going to have to find a way to refurbish them and send them back into the classroom and it becomes a vicious circle going back and forth again. We have to change what we think about education. In fact, our entire vision of what education is supposed to do needs to be shifted altogether. Federal government should please get professionals to run the education sector. They should not politicize the sector. It is the lifeblood of a nation. This is not some sector you give as loyalty reward for somebody who supported a campaign. We should get professionals to fix this because we, we don't have a future. The whole world is going technological. Do you understand? Artificial intelligence is going to replace so many jobs. And our people are not having the basic skills to even compete. And that is part of the big problem. Getting a job these days itself a job. All right, and what it becomes even worse when you are bringing out, churning out students, graduates out of our system, and they have not built the capacity to compete in the modern 21st century. And it's not just mastering and memorizing material that are academic. I'm talking about critical thinking skills, capacity to collaborate and communicate in important settings. I mean, the, the, the capacity to build the mind of the young person so that he can express himself coherently and intelligently in the wind world. That is the cross of education. And if you're not getting that, the children cannot compete. It's just, it's just, it's just, just the way it is. So we need to get professionals to run this system, hands off education, provide funding, let professionals handle it, and make sure there's an education policy spread across the entire length and breadth of Nigeria, particularly in the North. North is hugely disenfranchised in terms of educational service provision provided in those places. We need strong policy that will compel parents to make sure that children attend school, all right, because it is a matter of survival of a nation. 13.2 million out of two school children in Nigeria alone, that's like five Singaporean nations already for perspective. That's terrible.